So then once you've got um, a whole, you know, if, you've, if you're putting a thousand image files into um, Abby, you're going to get a thousand text files out at the end. And we created this little um, PowerShell script to actually combine all of those text files into a single um, spreadsheet to make working with them much more easily. And that we can share with people if you're interested. Uh, and so in the end, you're going to get um, cells of text corresponding to each barcode number. And then from there, you can work with that file. So at this point, what we have is skeletal data with some data parsed into fields, but those are the ones we entered by hand, scientific name and barcode. You have an image associated with each one of these files. You have raw o OCR text. At this point, we could take all the raw OCR text, import it in, back into the database into a big notes field, and put it all online. We can um, sort everything by a scientific name, and then you can just have external users query text for any term they might be looking for. It's not the best way to find data, but at least we can get stuff up immediately, um, even without data records. We're actually putting up, at this point, about 300,000 new records a year using this method. But what we don't have at this point is any data parsed into, these, into uh, usable text fields. So if you really want to search for a collector and you're just searching all the raw text, you're going to get all sorts of results and your users are going to have to really go through every file. So the next thing we really need to do is figure out how to complete data entry for all these records. So what do we have? There are tools out there that are being developed, that are constantly being redeveloped right now to um, help us with the automated parsing of text. We talked about Symbiota briefly yesterday. Um, there's a program called Apiary that is uh, being developed at, at BRIT, the Botanical Research Institute of Texas, that's doing uh, really great work on this. And uh, this is a screenshot of Salix. Kim's going to demo this later, so I'm not going to go into it right now. But you can actually use tools. You can import the OCR text into this um, program and it'll sort of try to parse it for you using natural language processing. And we'll, we'll, we'll show you examples. Uh, this is the Symbiota portal Kim mentioned yesterday. The great thing about this is you get one screen where you have all of your fields listed on one side, you have an image of the original label, and then underneath it you have all the um, OCR text. Now, Symbiota is in the process of integrating um, working with Salix and integrating this natural language processing so it can start doing the parsing in this screen for you. But you could also, if the OCR text is good, you can just cu cut and paste into the, into the data fields. And then it saves users from all the transcription that you usually have to do, um, which can cause, um, a which can be much more time consuming. So, but what we mainly use the OCR text for at this point are sorting the records. So we want to, we think that if you find all of the collections from a certain um, person or location on a certain date, you can use um, the, the record before to then ditto into the next record. So if you're just, rather than going from one random specimen to the next random specimen to the next random specimen, there's nothing going to link those records together. But by sorting everything by collector and doing all the collector data at once, you can then just copy and paste between records, and we've doubled, tripled our data entry rates this way. So it's still a lot of manual data entry, but by dittoing, again, you're reducing the number of keystrokes your data entry people have to perform. And again, this is the, the OCR text file showing it was a text search for J.A. Calder. And again, even on these really bad labels that are mostly handwritten, if you want to find all of the specimens collected by Cornelia Hollings' head, you can, you can find them pretty easily, even though the labels you know, themselves are primarily handwritten. And then we get into the manual king. Uh, we sort everything, we query, you can, and at that point you can query the text for anything. Are you looking for a specific collection number, a specific county the collector was working in? You can try to search the text for dates, look for anything collected at least from, you know, 1991 by this collector at this location. You can then get everything that was collected nearby. You can also cert, you can also be databasing records of different taxa all at once. When you're in a herbarium, if someone's gone to a location in the field and collected 20 different species, those 20 different 
specimens are going to be at 20 different places in the herbarium. So if you're doing data entry and you're going to one family, you're going to get that specimen from that same exact location once. And then maybe months later, you'll get to the next family where the next collection number was collected. And so you never would have databased those two back to back before. Um, but by doing it, by imaging everything up front and using OCR text to sort them and group them together, you can then get the next record even though they're completely different taxa. And again, uh, auto completion is really uh, the purpose here is using the previous data record, entering data once, and then using a ditto or an autocomplete function as much as you can so that you don't have to do as much hand typing. And we've been developing, and this can be done um, in one of the software programs that are being developed. We're using just an access database to, to do some of this work. There are a lot of different options um, and free options out there for actually using this. So all you'd have to fund up front is just creating skeletal records and imaging specimens. Now, we'll cover workflows uh, much more carefully tomorrow, and so you'll, you might feel like you're missing some of these steps. Uh, that's okay, I'll review a lot of this uh, in the morning. So again, we started with skeletal record creation, specimen imaging, uh, the images go th to create OCR text, and that all gets into a main specimen database. In that specimen database, we may have already had um, existing complete records. We might have field book data in there. And so we combine the OCR text with all of that information, sort of query and group and sort the records. Then we can do some manual in-house data entry or crowdsourcing and sort of keep everything in a loop. We get more existing complete records, it helps find more duplicates, and we're just feeding more and more information into this database and hoping that it just continually speeds up data entry. So just to summarize, um, using OCR, people, we still haven't gotten to the point yet where we can have just take an image and expect a computer to finish all of the work for us. We might be starting to get closer and closer to that. But for right now, we're still at the stage of using this to make data entry, uh, manual data entry, much more um, efficient. And you'll see a lot of this in the examples Kim, Kim's going to show you. Now, we're definitely not the only ones doing this. We're working with a lot of partners. Um, the Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh um, are also leaders in this. We've actually been doing a lot of discussions back and forth using similar methods. They actually did a, a workflow, uh, an actual test of 7,200 uh, specimens to compare if, w what are the rates for you know, doing random data entry, just taking whatever image you get and doing data entry one by one, combining OCR queries for collector um, and country and variations in between. And they found a um, significant difference, a sig very significant increase in rates for using the OCR text to um, group records by collector and country then randomly, which is what I think everyone's been finding too. Now this leads us, um, Christiana, we've been talking about this uh, tritrophic thematic collections network that we've been working on uh, amongst multiple institutions. And really in the United States right now, the focus isn't on fund this one institution to database all these records. It's to fund a project, fund 30 institutions at once for a common goal. And if everyone's working together, how can we increase digitization or learn from each other? Uh, in this specific project, New York is responsible for assisting smaller herbaria to get started. So Kim was the project coordinator of this. We recently promoted her to manage everything because she's so good at everything. Um, but she actually started this project and went out to several herbaria that didn't have imaging programs, got everyone set up to do this skeletal databasing and imaging. So everyone's imaging thousands and thousands of, of specimens. And then at New York, we're at the point of, we're two years in, we're getting all of these images back and we're combining a massive data set. So we've also asked all of our partners to send us any complete records they had. Because botanists collect in duplicates, we think there's anywhere from um, a quarter to a third of duplication amongst the collections in this network. So if we can use that to complete records that, from things that already exist, that would also speed up time. So we're assembling 
right now, <laughs> Kim's replacement is, walked into a very difficult job. She's going to be getting about 600,000 images that we're going to OCR and then filter through um, using all the methods I just described and things you'll see uh, when Kim does the demo. And we're going to try to get as much information parsed into these 600,000 records in the next 20 months. Um, we wish her luck. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into crowdsourcing because Christiana gave you a great introduction to it already. But another way, uh, other than just using, so we're currently using our staff to enter, use this OCR to then enter complete data records. But you can also throw this uh, OCR text out, group the records, and put it into crowdsourcing portals and ask citizen scientists to really help out. Symbiota, we're using it as our own data entry portal, but it can also be used to get crowdsourcing um, projects going. Uh, the Atlas of Living Australia, as you just saw, has a great volunteer portal. Notes from Nature, um, Christiane also um, pointed out. It also, it's doing Calibug, but it's also doing our um, Myco portal. Uh, we are doing a huge digitization project of labels from fungal specimens. Um, and we're asking volunteers to help us with those. And what I'd like to point out, especially for all the French speakers in the room, uh, is the digitization project done by the Paris Herbarium. Now, this is actually probably the project that got us all thinking and got us all wondering how do we do rapid digitization, because we thought they were crazy. Uh, you know, they were going to take every specimen, they, their uh, building needed renovation, they wanted to you know, change the way they filed the herbarium. So they're going to take everything out of the Paris herbarium, which is the largest herbarium in the world, take everything out, rearrange it. While it's out, why not digitize every single specimen and renovate the whole building at the same time and then put it all back together in three years? Um, so we went and saw it. Uh, they've got, uh, they had a huge warehouse rented where they had these two m big setups going where I think 20 people had to work at a time to just put specimens onto these conveyor belts. There's a camera here. You've got someone who had barcoded everything. Then it goes through, through the conveyor belt under this scanning camera. Then it's taken back and resorted and getting to get back in, uh, to the right place in the collection. And so they were able to image 10 million specimens in three years, which again, is amazing. And this is funded primarily through uh, the French government in a combination of both the structural uh, work that needed to be done on the physical building and then the digitization. So now they have 10 million specimens that are um, skeletal. And what do, what do they do with that? And they have a really great crowdsourcing portal. Maybe tomorrow afternoon when we're data, doing data entry for um, the French speakers in the room, this might be a better option to work through using the, the Paris records to do data entry. And this is actually one of my favorite um, crowdsourcing portals as well. It sort of gives a lot of different options. And we can talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. So they're putting a lot of these records online. I'm sure they're doing a lot of data entry themselves. But what they're also doing is by digitizing or at least imaging all these specimens, it's led to interesting collaborations that they might not have thought of originally. So they're now working with the Rio Botanical Garden in Brazil, who, and they have a huge Brazilian collection in Paris. And by having partial records, they have regions on these uh, skeletal records, so they can pull out anything they think would be a Brazilian collection. And Rio wants them to send all of these images there, and they're going to pay students or uh, herbarium employees in Brazil to, to complete the data entry. And what Brazil really wants is to create a national um, network of data about the entire um, flora of the country. And so what they're going to do is they're going to get to keep all of those images put the Paris images online through their own portal, keep a copy of all the data, and what Paris is going to get back in return is the complete data records. So Paris isn't going to have to worry about databasing that section of their own herbarium. And Rio is getting all of this, um, sort of all these images repatriated back to them uh, because a lot of these collections only exist in Europe and not within uh, the country. And so a lot of interesting things can be done once you've sort of uh, gotten 
at least partial records out there, you, you really get a sense of what do you have and you can start doing numbers and sort of estimating how long it's going to take to, to complete a lot of these projects. And everyone really is now working together. It's not we're getting this one grant to do these specimens of our own, which is how things used to be funded early on. Now it's let's all work together, let's throw everything into a pot and see what happens.